Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the CAMS Q4 F523 results conference call organized by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nachiket Kale from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Q4 and FR23 earnings conference call of Computer Age Management Services Limited. Today, from the management, we have with us Mr. Anuj Kumar, Managing Director, Mr. Ramcharan SR who is the CFO of the company, and Mr. Anish Saulani, Head of Investor Relations. Just before we proceed to start the call, uh, I'd like to give a small disclaimer that this conference call may contain forward-looking statements over the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. A detailed disclaimer is also published in the investor presentation, which was released to the stock exchanges. I hope everyone had a chance to go to the presentation and press release. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Anuj Kumar, Managing Director. Thank you, everyone, and over to you, sir. Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Nachiket. Uh, very pleased to be amongst all of you for this uh, Q4 earnings call. Uh, we will follow the standard order. I'll take you through a short uh, summary of developments and highlights uh, in Q4. You would have had the opportunity to download this presentation anyways by now. You should be able to see it, and I'll hand over to our CFO Ramcharan to talk a little about financials. We will have enough time left uh, to take Q&A. Uh, so to begin in terms of um, key highlights for Q4, uh, all of you are aware that Navi Mutual Fund, which is a digital first mutual fund, one of the leading digital first um, AMCs in the country, is now on the CAMPS platform. This was announced as a competitive win by us in 3Q and migrated to the CAMPS platform by end of 4Q. Uh, from an AUM perspective, uh, we were just above 28 lakh crore in Q4, so it was a muted under 1% asset growth, uh, mirroring the rest of the market uh, from Q3 into Q4. Uh, so our quarter end assets stood at about uh, 28 trillion Indian rupees. Within this, uh, we saw an encouraging trend in equity assets where equity contribution of the overall assets grew about half a percent from 64.8 to 65.3 and this was largely on the back of uh, growth in net sales which grew by a substantial margin from about 63 to 73 percent now these are one quarter numbers we have got to continue watching them to see uh, whether this will hold over the medium to long term i think the first signs are extremely positive uh, so, really an increase in equity net sales led to the growth of about half a percent in equity AUM. On the alternatives business, um, I'm very pleased to share with you and uh, report just consistent financial performance, consistent uh, succeeding financial performance over several quarters and now over the second successive year. On an annual basis, uh, revenue grew 26%, and this is just all-round growth in consumption, which means the installed base uh, buying more from us. Uh, new launches of clients in the installed base coming back to us. Uh, almost everyone uh, who, who launched a new scheme came back expansion in the installed base through new schemes. Very strong new logo wins. Uh, for both the PMS last On the digital side, uh, some of you may have seen uh, there's a stuff on our on our website, which says that uh, just basis are pioneering, which we started about two years back. Almost 20% of investors, and this, like I said earlier, was the last standing. 
of uh, where investors did prefer uh, an in-person relationship manager kind of meeting. 20% of that traffic has now been converted into a e-franking, e-signing, completely digital flow. Uh, and Camp HealthServe now has over 75 signups. So imagine that uh, out of the 1,000 of AIS in the country, almost the top 70, 80 are, are going digital on our platform, and a lot more are expected to join the platform within the year. Uh, from a FinServ perspective, which is the account aggregator and TSP offering, uh, we continue to gain moment, momentum with uh, several signups in the quarter. You may have read that we were also the first ones to test a new use case of doing bank account validation. You know, bank accounts get validated largely through the one to be better drop facility, which banks offer and uh, payment aggregators offer, but uh, a slightly richer information stack is available off account aggregator where you can see uh, second holder details and NRI account details, et cetera. So this is a pioneering effort by us. And then the acquisition of uh, Think360, which you know is a very strong player and perhaps one of the two or three in processing SMS data to, to gain consumer insights. That will continue to bolster the offering. In fact, uh, for the bank statement analyzer, which Think is built, uh, we now have four signups along with the CAMS team. And this is what has happened in the last one month. You know, we announced the, announce and the, the uh, acquisition about a month back in the beginning of April. So that will continue to bolster <clears throat> this entire offering. Uh, CAMS rep, from a repository perspective, uh, you know that a mandatory DMAT in uh, insurance policies was announced as a forward-looking step by the regulator, as a proposed forward-looking step back in September. The, the necessary regulation has still not got passed, but what we continue hearing is that there is a very active dialogue in the marketplace between the regulator and key ecosystem entities to take this forward and then uh, create, the, uh, I would say, the, the background to amend laws wherever laws have to be amended. Within that, uh, the one thing that we saw was that because of the active media and press and our efforts, uh, consumers' preference to push their policies into DMAT and their preference to open EI accounts was almost 2x. So both in policy growth, which grew 2.2x, and uh, platform transactions at 2x, I think we saw very, very positive numbers in FI23. And what we expect is that just given the consumer sentiment, this momentum could well continue to FI24, uh, even without uh, the specific announcement uh, kind of taking shape. If it takes shape, of course, the shape of things will be very, very different. But just the consumer-led and our uh, foundational effort in the market, I think, is yielding a lot of results here. Uh, from an NPS perspective, we continue to hold the number two position in ENPS with a 9% market share. Our POP retail relationships are now in place uh, starting about February this year. So the large four or five POPs are now doing business with us. You can see our name on their websites when you try to create an account and uh, buy, buy an NPS policy. So that part is uh, going on well. Of course, it's a, it's a slow climb, uh, as we've always said, in the NPS CRA business. Uh, on CAMS pay, uh, another great year, 27% uh, revenue growth. Largely uh, riding on transaction volumes, I must also say that from a merchant sign-up perspective and from a new product offering perspective, this was a very strong year by CAMS pay. Uh, and we'll talk a little more about it. We received RBI as a principal uh, approval to be a payment aggregator. We will now be pushing all of this business um, into the subsidiary, uh, and that should happen uh, sometime during the year. And from a digital perspective, uh, my camps continue to hold fourth among the top two fintech apps, uh, MF uh, fintech apps, uh, with close to over 6 million 60 lakh downloads. Uh, MS Central continued to gain popularity. I will just quote uh, one metric for you where daily API hits, and most of them are cash, the, the consolidated account statement hits. Uh, we haven't yet uh, industrialized and gone into production with, uh, <coughs> with partners on an API architecture for either financial transactions or non-financial. But just this is 20,000. We're expecting this to scale at least 2x during the year. And then for a lot of heft to be added, as uh, sometime in this quarter, we should be able to go live with both NFTs and, uh, and financial transactions. 
also a very interesting offering in a single API across the mutual fund industry to service loan against mutual funds. Uh, has now been developed and is being offered uh, just to create a much easier consumer journey. And uh, collectively amongst all of this, uh, we believe that MF Central has a lot of uh, real growth scope. Uh, one, of course, is uh, just the traffic that comes to the app on the website, but also all the traffic that will come to the uh, partner app. Uh, you will recollect in the first week of April, we had announced a strategic uh, investment upwards of 50% in, in Think uh, 360. Uh, this is a part of uh, a 100% buyout which will play out over the next three or four years as we have the call option uh, to invest 100% into the company. Uh, from a relevance perspective, while I'm sure a lot of you have read about uh, what we released uh, in our reports and have seen the website, uh, Think has been active in both the India domestic market and in the international markets, uh, especially the U.S., in several areas, but uh, from a product perspective, Algo 360, which is, you can think of it broadly in a rough way as a precursor to account aggregator, not using the account aggregator architecture, but using uh, Android SMS inboxes uh, to give insights on the consumer. Uh, they've been the leading producer with some of the largest banks, NBFCs, et cetera, uh, on the platform. Uh, similarly, Quick ID, which basically does, uh, it started as a video KYC tool, is now very active for onboarding across the marketplace. So uh, you will find very, very large consumers like Central Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bajaj, et cetera, on the platform. And then there are other video-based use cases in terms of consumer interaction, et cetera, that are possible on this platform. So very, very popular. Uh, two platforms. Algo is uh, is a complementary offering to account aggregator, and like I said, in addition to to account aggregator and TSP, uh, the bank statement analyzer product is now in the market. Uh, is going live with several brokerages and a few NBFCs, and the the BSA comes from uh, from Think. Uh, similarly, in uh, Flow Expert and Amaze, Amaze of course is the uh, data analytics platform for account aggregator. FlowExpert is a low-code platform which uh, helps integration of uh, APIs and uh, various other forms of SDKs uh, through minimum coding. Uh, all of these uh, B2B products being actively sold in the Indian markets with a very, very strong position in terms of franchise, existing base franchise and pipeline. And we see complete uh, complementarity and a joint go-to-market between the Cam Spencer and Sterling teams and uh, between uh, between Think360 uh, for the various offerings related to account aggregator. On the services side, just pure data analytics, and this is uh, basically business intelligence, uh, modeling, uh, various kinds of uh, data engineering, storage, warehouses, those kind of things. Uh, Think has been selling both in the major markets, uh, on ground in the US in a services model, and on ground in India in a services model, and we believe that this will have a lot of complementarity with the, with the data richness that the Indian uh, consumer part of capital markets has, especially mutual funds and AIFs. So we are we are creating package offerings to take to the market uh, collectively, and you will continue to hear from us from time to time on on how this is shaping up. Overall, and I spoke about this a little, uh, I'm on chart number eight. Uh, from an AUM growth perspective, I spoke that um, the, the annual growth was in the range of about 6 to 7%. The quarterly growth was under 1% in assets. The salutary occurrence, of course, is expansion in equity AUM share and in the equity next year share going up by almost 9.5% during the quarter. And again, a metric to be watched. Uh, we believe what is a very strong underpinning, a demonstrated strong underpinning is SIP registrations. And these are gross numbers. They obviously have to be netted for uh, for iterations. But just look at the gross numbers. Whatever be the state of the market, uh, 37 lakh SIP is gross registered, climbing to 37 and a half, crossing 38, and touching 40 in the Jan Feb March quarter. I think is a is a fantastic foundational metric for the for the for the industry as you've seen. This is uh, this is obviously led to an expanded market share for us at 62% of new SIPs registered. 
And an equally important number is to see that the monthly SIP collections, which for us cross 8,000 crore, are now nudging in the distance in the in the direction of 8,500 crore, is, is again a strong foundational metric, adding up to about just 1 lakh crore of gross SIP-led inflows in the year. And you know, last year, uh, the industry has seen almost a 200 to 300 crore at a <clears throat> growth at a market level. We've seen growth of 150 to 200 crore every month uh, from a CAMS RTI level. And I think those are uh, just great numbers if they consistently perform for another year or two. Uh, this will this will continue to impact and, and grow the, the, the foundational participation in the market and obviously will be uh, very attractive for the AUM numbers. NFO again, very pleased to share with you uh, you know, a growing 71% share in industry collections. Our clients, as you would have seen almost throughout the year, but specifically in the fourth quarter, uh, going on overdrive uh, through new offerings. These were across various areas, and I think have have uh, consistently assisted us in, in, in keeping market share and growing it in this emerging area. Uh, chart number nine, uh, I'll talk about the, the numbers you've seen this all, uh, about a 68.2% market share based on quarterly AUM, uh, 28 lakh crore of overall assets, absolute assets of CAMS, just over 13 lakh crore or 13 trillion in equity AUM. Equity AUM did grow 18% year on year, uh, although a very small growth quarter on quarter. And again, uh, what we are seeing in the initial month, these are just green shoots, of course, and using the same numbers. I think those numbers have to hold, and the interest rate regimes have to turn friendly towards equity investing overall. But that could lead to maybe some perceptible change uh, during the year. Uh, from an industry perspective, the industry just crossed 41 lakh crore uh, overall uh, industry AUM and just over 19 lakh crore uh, for equity. Uh, you can see transaction volumes, etc. I'm on chart number 10. Uh, I, I think just consistent uh, retail participation metric, whichever way you look, just consistent retail participation metric. The transaction volumes are obviously led by SIP triggers, so you see a quarter and quarter 6%, annual 8% growth. The SIP book I spoke about, I spoke about what was a gross metric, not a net, but the net metric is the SIP book. And you need to look uh, no further than to see the 18% year-on-year growth. So you saw 40 lakh SIPs being registered with CAM service funds in the fourth quarter, which was a gross metric, the net metric. What this leads to after the percentage is a 18% year-on-year uh, growth in SIP book uh, for CAM service, and, well, uh, CAM service mutual funds. Again, uh, SIP transactions process, 68% up. Uh, which means most of the SIP book holds similarly live investor folios 11% up in the year. And then from a unique investor's perspective, close to 260 lakh at about 12% year, up year on year. Uh, similarly, on chart number 11, you have the same numbers uh, for the entire year. I'm sure all of you are familiar, so I won't spend too much time on this. And I'll move forward. Uh, I'm in chart number 13. We spoke about the alternatives business 21%. Year on year growth for the fourth quarter, 26% for the uh, year on year growth uh, overall for annual revenue. Uh, we spoke about uh, you know every other metric that you see here. Of course, 1.5 trillion of assets under service is a brilliant number, but I think um, it will go up and will continue to go up just with the increased interest uh, that we are seeing in AIF. So you've seen that new AIF registration with the regulator in the year has been at the bottom of about 45 and a quarter, at the top of about 75. That's almost like one year of seeking registration uh, every day uh, in the best of times during the year. Of course, not everybody has launched. And, and launches are slightly slow, but all of that uh, should come back as the market uh, kind of uh, uh, turns back. And their ability to produce alpha over alternate, I mean, uh, over mutual funds and other modes of investment continue to get demonstrated. Uh, move to the next. And similarly, I spoke about uh, account aggregator and PSP and about the new uh, the new use case of uh, bank account validation. So all of that has uh, gone well. We are continuing to be under 10% market share right now, but building up consistently. And I'm sure we will have uh, better numbers to report to you uh, as we progress during the year. Go to the next. 
Uh, from a payments perspective, again, very pleased to share with you greater, 50, greater than 50% market share uh, in our mutual fund ecosystem. You will remember three or four years back, this was a much smaller number, but just consistent, I think, uh, tying the product very closely to the needs of the mutual fund market and, uh, and very intense client engagement has led to this number. We have over 140 million uh, active match mandates almost 500 crore of monthly transactions. So you will see all of these numbers consistently going up. Of course, UPI auto pay, which is now being used as an alternate to the e mandate to, to just place uh, a fresh SIP and allow for auto debits, uh, has been very, very popular already. Uh, two lakh plus cases and this will grow during the year too. And from an industry presence perspective, we have spoken about a significantly deep cut uh, expansion in merchant base and uh, a large number of merchant additions. Uh, like we said, we received the in principle approval from RBI to, to set up a subsidiary and move this business there under the new license, which we will be doing now. Uh, Camp Surep, I spoke a little. Uh, I'm in chart number 16. You can uh, see some of the numbers. The only thing that I would like to add that there will be more excitement during the year as we reimagine <clears throat> the platform for uh, doing transactions and those transactions will be uh, around the payment payments, uh, valuation statements, around uh, loan against insurance policies, which you know for one or two of the public sector companies has been a very popular mode for investors to raise money. Uh, that will go live sometime in the second quarter and uh, create a special place for us uh, overall in the industry. And then we continue to bid in the market as KYC becomes mandatory for uh, insurance, both for life and non-life. We continue to facilitate uh, the service uh, for, our, uh, for our insurance clients and to make sure that they're riding on our technology uh, as they do you know live validation and KYC for more and more of uh, insurance consumers. I spoke about CRA. Uh, I, I will I will just restate the I mean, uh, kind of re-emphasize the numbers a little. Uh, gross NPS registrations just under three lakh for the industry, about two lakh eighty six thousand. CAM standing at about just short of twenty five thousand at a number two position. And from a POP perspective, uh, nine POPs, think of them as uh, nine of the top ten, those are the kind we've onboarded. Now continue to add traffic uh, to, to overall NPS CRA volumes for camps. Uh, I will take a pause here and hand over to Ram Charan so that he can speak to you about financials. Ram, over to you. Thank you, Anuj. So I'll take five minutes to take you over the broad numbers of the financials. Uh, from a quarter basis, uh, we ended the quarter at 249.2 crores in revenue, which was up 2.5% year-on-year and 2.3% quarter-on-quarter. The comparable number for the sequential as the last year quarter was around 243 crores. Uh, this is uh, on the back of growth in MF revenue. Uh, MF revenue for the quarter was at 222 crores, uh, versus 217 the comparable quarter last year, and 220. Uh, the growth broadly mirrored the growth in, uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, the growth in uh, AUM, as you saw in the earlier uh, earlier part of the presentation. Uh, the AUM for the quarter, uh, the average AUM was at 28.03 crores, which was up 5% uh, when compared to the last year same quarter. But sequentially, there was a very minimal increase. The assets did not grow. It was a 27.83 uh, lakh crores in the sequential quarter that went by. So overall, uh, the MF revenue grew 2% um, on a quarter uh, on a quarter and quarter comparable last year basis, and 0.6% on a sequential quarter basis. We, asset, we generally break this down into asset-based and non-asset-based revenue. The asset-based revenue uh, again broadly mirrored the increase <coughs> in AUM or the stagnation in AUM as the case may be. So the sequential quarter there was no uh, change in this, um, almost the same number in terms of the. Uh, asset-based revenue was 187 crores and uh, the non-asset-based revenue which was uh, up very smartly quarter on quarter 5% and but down 5% year on year. Uh, the sequential quarter uh, increase in 5% was uh, on account of the increased billing that we are doing on adjacencies and allied services. 
uh, for example, the MF Central or the other uh, other um, application services that we give to our customers, uh, there was some increase in the allied services like anti-money laundering, etc. So uh, that contributed to a smart increase in their quarter-on-quarter -quarter, uh, non-asset-based revenue. Uh, the overall, the transaction uh, remains st uh, static, uh, transaction revenue, and the call center revenue also remains static uh, over the year-on-year -year and quarter-on-quarter. -quarter. From a non-MF revenue perspective, uh, we've seen the, uh, the earlier uh, presentation you would have kind of shown you that we've seen gr green shoots in some and smart growth in a few of the uh, verticals where we have placed our bids. Uh, it was up 7.7% year-on-year. Uh, the current uh, quarter non-MF revenue is 27.5 crores comparable to 25.5 crores in uh, FI22 Q4 and 23 crores in uh, FI23 Q3. So which means that uh, you know there's been a 7.7% growth year on year and 18.6% growth on a sequential quarter basis, driven largely by the growth that we are continuing to see on the AAF vertical. Uh, you know, year on year we grew on about 21% AAF. And payments continue to show a strong performance in terms of additional mandates as well as transaction processing, even from a digital as well as from a NAS and ECH perspective. Uh, the payment revenue grew 24% year on year on the back of the increased mandates and transaction processing. Uh, we also seen some uptick in the KRA revenue. KRA, as you know, we are the license holders uh, for the KYC verification, the securities market. Uh, we have onboarded some new customers on a quarter on quarter basis. The KRA revenue has uh, shot up by almost 50 percentage and we continue to be bullish on the KRA revenue going forward also. So overall, uh, you know, the asset based revenue is muted in keeping in line with, uh, with the growth or no growth in the asset center management. Uh, but the non-MF revenue continues to show an uptick. Uh, uh, for the first quarter after many years, we've had the non-MF share of business to be more than 10%. It's 11% in the current quarter, and the remaining 89% is the MF revenue. So uh, we are slowly seeing, uh, you know, the target state of 15%. Uh, you know, slowly we're coming towards that state. And with the acquisition of Pink, I think uh, we will get to that place uh, as planned and as communicated to you earlier. In terms of yields, uh, which is which is an obvious question that a lot of people may have and how have the yields behaved and what is the reason for it. So on a year-on-year -year basis, our yields have been static, uh, you know, in 2.72 has the yield that we have seen. Uh, but one thing to note is the asset mix. Uh, you know, over the last year, we had a, a tremendous growth in the equity component of the asset mix. Uh, it was around 46.5% for the quarter and 46.4% earlier quarter, almost static. But on a year-on-year -year basis, you know, we had kind of grew. Uh, end of last year, it was less than 40%. Even on a comparable quarter last year, it was only 41%. So over the period of the year, uh, the increase in the equity component has had a favorable impact on the mix. And that kind of nullified to a large extent the uh, depletion that's happened because of either uh, uh, the telescopic brick pricing, base pricing, or in some, in a very few cases, some price remission that's been given for long-term contracts. So that trend has held out even in the current quarter. There is a small depletion yield that we have seen in the current quarter, uh, given that the equity has remained, equity component has remained almost same from overall mix perspective. Uh, we've seen a small depletion in yields, but that is something on expected lines, and we, we continue to watch that number as we go forward. Uh, I'll now go into the profitability numbers. Um, as we are, as you know, we've always guided that our profitability will be in the early 40s, and uh, we have kind of consistently retained that number uh, as guidance. So even in the current quarter, we have uh, uh, clock and operating EBITDA of around 44%, 43.9% to be precise, uh, at 109.30 crores, which is our operating EBITDA, which is uh, up 0.9% quarter on quarter, but down 2.6% year on year on the back of increased spending and investments that we have done on the various initiatives that we spoke about, including the AA, TSP, CRA, the reimagined platform, and the re-architecting our current platform also. So overall, uh, uh, the margins continue to be stable, uh, continue to be under the, uh, you know, in, in the same range as what we predict it will be. Uh, from a PBT perspective, we ended the uh, quarter at uh, 98 point, uh, at uh, 98 crores PBT, which is 38.4 percentage, uh, which is almost uh, flat quarter on quarter and year on year, and PAT of 29 uh, percent mirrored the same thing. Uh, our return on network continues to be very, very high at around 39 percentage, and we ended the uh, quarter uh, with a cash and cash equivalent of around 482 crores uh, at a very healthy balance of 482 crores in excess cash. And the board was pleased to propose a final dividend of rupees 12 per share, which will be paid subject to the approval of the shareholders in the AGM. 
So uh, this is also the financial year end. So just a couple of minutes on the revenue and profit numbers for the year and how it compared with the earlier year numbers. We ended the year with a revenue of 972 crores, uh, which is up 6.8 percent. Uh, the comparable number last year was 910 crores, so a 62 crore increase in revenue in the current year. Uh, on the back of uh, predominantly the increase in assets and the increase in the asset-based revenue and mutual fund revenue, uh, the assets uh, under management uh, grew 7% uh, you know, on this year-on-year uh, -year basis. And the increase in fee also mirrored that and we actually grew our asset-based revenue at 7.3 percentage. The non-asset-based revenue uh, grew marginally at 2.7 percentage on a year-on-year -year basis for the full year. Uh, it was around uh, 133 crores, uh, mainly because of the uh, you know transaction and the other miscellaneous applications that people, including MF Central, and the non-MF revenue, uh, keeping uh, you know with the numbers that we saw for the quarter also for the entire year there was a growth of 9.3 percent year on year, which is more than the asset-based revenue, uh, predominantly driven by the AAF and the payments growth of 26 and 27 percent respectively. Uh, so overall, the yields uh, on a year-to-year -year basis remained stable at 2.71. However, we have seen a reduction in the yields over the last couple of quarters and we will continue to watch that number. So uh, from an operating EBITDA perspective for the year, um, again we ended the year with an operating EBITDA of 422 crores, almost 421.75, uh, which is marginally down when compared to the last year. So on a year-on-year -year basis, our profitability remains uh, same, uh, no big growth in profitability in 287 crores. That was uh, 285 crores in the current year. The return on network continues to be uh, very high at uh, 40 percentage. Uh, the, these numbers are after considering non cash ease of charges, uh, which was at 26.7 crores for the year. Uh, um, uh, that's kind of included in these numbers the operating EBITDA, PBT, and PAC numbers that I spoke about. So, with this, uh, I will kind of end the uh, commentary on the financials and hand it back to Nachiket uh, if you want to open it up for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Swarna Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you uh, for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so, three questions from my side. Uh, first one, again, uh, just to understand, get a little bit more clarity on the yield part. So, uh, I understand that there is a telescopic pricing, but between the last quarter and this quarter also, uh, given that equity has uh, slightly, uh, you know, share has marginally gone up and yield has slightly come down. So, I just wanted to understand if there were, in fact, any uh, renewals that happened during the quarter that kind of resulted in this. And then going ahead uh, in in the next fiscal, uh, given that you know there has been uh, regulatory development and taxation related development on the debt mutual fund side, uh, wanted to know your views on uh, how you think this whole yield part will develop uh, and how would the asset growth be on the debt side. So those are the first two questions. Third one uh, wanted to understand also on the insurance repository side. What is our market share currently and from your point of view in terms of say, revenue for all the players together, what could be the opportunity size that we might be eyeing if uh, you know, things pan out the way we are expecting? Thank you. No, sure. So what I'll do is um, I, I'll try to answer your questions and then perhaps Ramcharan will chip in on the yields. See, on debt MF, and uh, uh, I'm just classifying this into two parts. Uh, we're not talking of the uh, corporate treasuries, which come into basically overnight and liquid. So I'm not talking of that money, but just pure debt, where a lot of times the intention of the investor is to, is to hold out for long-term capital gains. 
Uh, when this announcement came, and even till today, you've been reading articles and coverage that uh, the segment will become unattractive for retail investors because of the tax rollback. What we've seen in reality is um, is counterintuitive <clears throat> and does not align to this line. So between 20th of March to end of March, our debt portfolio uh, grew almost eight to nine percent on the in those ten days on the back of intense selling. Very easy to understand because every mutual fund was up in the market, and all the CIOs were doing webinars just to tell investors that this is your last chance to book yourself into this money before the tax rollback happens. So on 1st of April, the sales should have evaporated completely. But in the first five weeks, from 1st of April up to up to last week, uh, we have seen net sales of another nine to 10,000 crores, which is a very good number. It's almost, uh, on our portfolio size, almost 2% up in one month from a net sales perspective. And I think the reason for that, uh, that there are two reasons uh, the industry feels about it. Once in one intense selling had not happened so far in debt, in those 10 days, the amount of consumer communication and push that happened at the level of every intermediary was just significantly high. Consumers almost rediscovered this asset class and have started to come back. And they haven't stopped coming back on 31st of March. They've come back all this while. Now, will this play out for the whole quarter, the whole year? For us to see, but it's a counterintuitive trend, which is very important. The second part of this is that, as and you know, if you go back to December, January, the markets were expecting that the interest rate increase regime is coming to an end, and it did not come to an end. Uh, it hasn't come officially to an end yet. So it played out in the Jan, Feb, March, April time period also. But as that happens. The expectation from medium term and long term investments in debt is that uh, once the uh, fall in interest rates begins to happen, then the NAV increases and capital gains there uh, will be in addition to whatever else consumers will gain. And I think a part of both of these, one and two of what I spoke, uh, have come to play. I think you just got to watch this marketplace carefully for the for this entire quarter and coming days on whether this momentum will go away or whether this will continue. So that's uh, that kind of encompasses the thing on debt funds. But as everybody was expecting that this will evaporate as an asset class for retail investors immediately as we cross over into FI24, that hasn't happened. On the I'm moving now to insurance sorry, repository sorry, where uh, sorry, sorry go on. Sorry to interrupt. Just one quick follow up on this. Out of this nine to ten thousand crores of net sales that you uh, mentioned. Uh, any color you can give on how much is coming from say cost rates and how much is coming from individual investors? Uh, well, I can give you an approximate estimate that a lot of this is, money is coming from retail. Uh, we will try to pull out the number and give you more specific. Uh, my suggestion will be just hang in for another month or so and see whether this plays out completely in May. But just think of it that this is not so much of corporate treasury money, this is more of retail money. Not sir. Thanks. Yeah, please go. Uh, moving to the next, moving to insurance repository, uh, we, we've spoken to you in the past that the size of the opportunity is about uh, two, two and a half crore policies which are under demand, uh, growing to over 50 crore. So the size of the opportunity is 25x. Now, Honestly, what did all of us expect? We expected that uh, starting September, when those announcements were made, uh, there would be in the next four to six months almost a regime that would uh, come into play. Uh, what's happened is that we continue to hear from the regulator, of course, we're working closely with them to make sure that once the regime happens of mandatory demand, then we have the capacity and the ability to service consumers if the market and when the market grows to the 25-30x, which it will. Uh, and we also hear that they are uh, in close discussions with the with all the ecosystem participants just to make sure that everybody's view is accommodated as they turn this into a statute and turn this into a mandatory position, which is something which is taking time. Uh, so from an overall industry perspective, there are various views that you know. There are people who believe this could be a... Uh, 500 crore per annum revenue industry opening up. Our own view is that it will go through some pricing depletion and therefore the a more reasonable size could be a 150 to 200 crore industry which will open up uh, and there will be growth on top of it. At between 35 to 40 percent, uh, we are typically around 35 percent in terms of uh, EIA accounts and upwards of 35 in terms of policies. 
and like you said in the past that if we if we hold that position for the next few years uh, we can see a very interesting and large size market opening up for us uh, even without that you would see that uh, just by themselves just given the increased coverage in the media and all the efforts that we are making uh, ei accounts and policies have almost grown to x uh, the new inflow has grown to x during the year and we expecting this momentum to continue uh, during fi24 also i'll change the topic to you so now if you want to take this sure. so uh, just a broad and then i'll answer your question specifically for the quarter so broadly i just try to recap for everybody's benefit that the yields could be impacted by three things so one is the uh, one is obviously the telescopic pricing which we spoke about the structure of the pricing with the customers is telescopic the second is the uh, the mix that happens in terms of equity and others and even within debt you know what happens between liquid and debt matters to the mix and the third is the price reductions or remissions that ha- that happen to the customers when they come up for uh, periodic negotiations so uh, you know uh, in this particular quarter we have seen a small depletion yield uh, you know in terms of specifically i think it will be around 0.02 pips is what we are seeing now two things have happened one is uh, you know uh, telescopic pricing has played a part of course you will say that assets have not grown so how could telescopic pricing play a part in this so you should also understand during the quarter uh, a couple of our major customers actually merged and got into a single entity so this gets have which means that the flat based pricing for them gets automatically reset to a lower rate because the combined aum becomes higher than the slab that was there earlier so there is some impact of that and secondly uh, there was uh, in the last quarter we also said that there is some price negotiation that been concluded with uh, our major customers all of them um, most of them got rolled over barring a one or two uh, and uh, one was a renewal after a five year period so that has got a structure whereby progressively some discounts are given so that's also having an impact on the fourth quarter so these are uh, contributed to both telescopic as well as uh, the small price reduction given for one customer does contribute to this however you know what has been uh, in mitigating us so far has been the equity which as you rightly pointed out uh, there's not much of a difference you know 0.01% difference in equity uh, does not make a very big difference from the overall mix realization perspective and overall the the pool that is the decrease or increase was so small that even one small change here and there could have made a difference on the yields because overall almost it remained stagnant you know 0.67% was i think the growth in assets itself for the entire quarter on quarter so that's what is played out in the current quarter you got it sir very clear just quickly uh, if, you, if you could highlight if we should we expect any kind of such uh, more uh, negotiations happening in the coming fiscal uh, or over the next couple of quarters and also if you could uh, quickly provide your comments on how to think about the other expense as well as the ease of costs for fy24 short sure. so in terms of uh, you know it's uh, it is not a uh, right conclusion to come that every customer contract will have a price reduction it need not it won't a uh, uh, very few exceptions like what we saw last time which is you know there was a reset of rates at five years for a particular big customer so the general trend is not to give a price discount so i do not think that this uh this is a uh, this is going to be repeat itself in the future frequently infrequently there could be situation where this may happen but that's not going to be the norm so uh while the telescopic pricing will see and will see the price uh, you know yield under pressure to some extent going forward we are not for a moment saying the yields will improve dramatically or will remain stat- static if there is telescopic impact uh we do not see uh, a situation where you know the exceptional price reductions or something is going to be given to the customers which will have a one time impact on this uh we'll have to wait and see as and when the contracts come up for renewal uh, as i said last quarter uh, most of the contracts have been closed for a two or three year period in the last year having said that there will be a few customers that do come up for uh, renewals and we'll have to wait and see what happens from a ter perspective also uh on the other expenses uh, well uh, the other expenses are the fixed expenses that you see and you would have seen a increase of probably 3 crores in the current quarter and that's what is prompting the question a couple of things uh, the other expenses also include the legal and professional fee are deal related expenses that we have incurred on the think analytics and principal acquisitions and the increase in business promotion costs that we are doing uh, for the new businesses for example the cra uh, the act that we do for the nps the what we do for the events for the account aggregator tsp and the increased uh, you know travel and uh, and all those expenses that come into it play a part in increase in other expenses there is also the bcp related drills that we do uh, you know mandated by sebi just become very frequent including an unannounced drills for which we incur a lot of expense on travel 
on accommodation, etc. So all these things are adding up, uh, you know, to the increase in the other expenses. It's more kind of a fixed expenses that we see. There is some one-off in this. There is some one-off of 40 50 lakhs, which is the deep-related expenses uh, that we incurred for the acquisition, which accounting standards will want us to write off in the particular period which we have done. Uh, so that's basically the breakup of the other expenses in terms of uh, what you see in the P and L. Uh, sorry, what was your third question? If I may ask, please. Sorry. So the, the ease of ease of service. Sure. So, ease of, uh, as I said, uh, in the current uh, year, uh, we have taken a, a charge of 26.72 uh, crores of ease of cost in the current year. The last year it was around 25.3 crores. Uh, we have four batches or four plans now valid uh, grants, and uh, we expect the cost for this in the next year to be around 14 crores. Now, uh, so that's 26.7 crores in the current year, going to 14 crores the next year. However, the only caveat I will give you is in the course of the year, if the board does grant additional options, then the cost will flow into the PNL. But as of now, as things stand today, uh, the current year cost was 26.72 crores, and the next year cost is expected to be around 14 crores. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Swarnab, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions, as there are several participants waiting for their turn. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain with Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a couple of questions. Firstly, just uh, wanted some view on this. You mentioned that uh, you know this uh, size of the insurance repository could be 50 crores, and uh, in terms of number of policies and the overall revenue potential is 250 crores. So we're talking about just a five rupee per policy kind of a uh, take rate, which uh, to me seems to be much on the lower side, especially with you know uh, services like we're talking about uh, a loan against. Uh, policies or interest uh, or you know, reminders for uh, policies. There's so many things that uh, that can be activated to fire people per policy. Uh, you know, is, a, is that a conservative number or how should we think about that? Uh, secondly, on the core mutual fund business, uh, could you give us some clarity on as to what is the flow market share in terms of uh, on the equity side in particular? Uh, what would be your uh, you know, uh, net flow market share in the industry and how it has shaped up in the say, past, uh, uh, past one year or so? No, sure. So, uh, on the insurance repository, uh, just like we've seen in uh, many other markets, yeah, so uh, I think the way I'd sum it up is it's okay for you to take it as a conservative answer. And like I said, uh, different people have come in with different views of the size, potential size, being between 200 to 500 crore. Uh, we continue to believe that in all such markets, which are multi-participant, uh, when markets open up, uh, some degree of price depletion will happen. It's not been a very competitive uh, market so far. If, for example, depletion does not happen, then you are easily, just from a DMAT perspective, looking at a 500 crore market, but unlikely. Unlikely that no depletion will happen. If prices deplete to 50% of where they are, then you could be looking at a 200 to 250 crore market. So take it as a conservative answer. Let it play out. I think it is best to estimate uh, with uh, conservatism and let it play out, and the top upside will all be ours. That's one. Secondly, uh, from a transaction revenue perspective, we aren't projecting much into this yet. And the reason we're not projecting much into this yet is that there are various forces at play. You know that digital transactions from a chargeability perspective uh, is both a yes and a no. I mean, if you, if you just look around yourselves and see the number of platforms which offer free services, uh, you will see several of them, and therefore we believe that digital transaction charging is first to be inserted in the marketplace. The so value has to be delivered to the consumer and to the insurance principal. So all of that will be on top of this. That is not arising out of the DMAT alone. Uh, that's the way I would like you to uh, kind of pictureize this entire thing. Uh, on part two of your question on what you should take as uh, 
equity market share and equity net flow. Uh, you did see that equity net flow and in the presentation grew from about 63 odd to 73 odd percent. Now it's a steep increase. I agree, it's a steep increase. Uh, can you read a lot into this of one or two of a large mutual funds and their schemes gaining back in rankings, etc. A bit of that, a bit of that, and the rest I think has to play out over at least a couple of quarters before you and I kind of uh, draw meaningful. Uh, conclusions from this. The share of equity in AUM went up half a percent, uh, riding on this, riding on SIP inflows, etc. So I think we'll have to watch it for some time. The numbers look good right now uh, and improving. And you know that a couple of large mutual funds have been building out their position in terms of market rankings, etc., for the last year or two. And some of that has to show up uh, now. So, uh, but, but I would much rather watch it for another quarter or two before I come to a real conclusion on whether the direction is firm here. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Sahaj Mittal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, hi. Uh, morning, all. Uh, just uh, one question from my side on other expenses. So you alluded uh, to the fact that 40 to 50 lakhs of expenses are one-offs, right? But even ex of that, uh, there's some 2.5 to 1.5 crores increase uh, on a sequential basis, right? And if I look at, uh, at first quarter and second quarter, so the run rate, the quarterly run rate was at about 19 odd crores, which is now at about 23 odd crores. So how sticky these expenses are because the operating leverage will not play out given the kind of growth which we are seeing in our top line, right? The growth has been soft, but the expenses continue to grow, right? So for FY24, if you could give us some guidance uh, in terms of expenses, that would be great, yeah. Thanks, Sahaj. Uh, yes, uh, you know, apart from that, there is a two and a half crores increase. So I'll just give you some perspective on this. Uh, you know, uh, some of these expenses, I'll kind of split it into four or five things, right? One is the legal professional expenses that we see, uh, the deal related, but you should also understand that there is a lot of requirement from us from a SEBI perspective. Uh, you know, there are se several audits that we are doing now, which we did not do in the past. For example, a VAPT audit is something that we're doing for the first time as mandated by SEBI. Regular ISMS audits, internal audits. So it is a highly regulated entity requiring a lot of spend, and everything is on, uh, you know, top notch uh, firms or impanel firms uh, who are kind of doing it for us. So this is an expense that we will continue to incur in terms of you know the audits, and this, this is not a this is not a small amount. You know, uh, just to give you a perspective, only on the uh, you know the capital market related uh, you know uh, security audit, IID uh, audit, ISMS audit, VAPT audit, cyber security audit, etc. In the last quarter alone, we would have spent more than 50 lakhs, right? So it's not an insignificant amount any longer. And then we also spent money on marketing, and this. Could be uh, you know something that you will, that will be the flavor of the future. For example, the market research for the reimagine. Reimagine, uh, Anuj was mentioning earlier, is the uh, platform that we are launching for for the insurance repository, which has got huge benefits and upside to it. So we did spend a lot of money on thinking through the platform, working through market surveys. You know, spend on media from a CRA perspective, including radio ads. So these are things that are the incubation of the business we feel, and we are very, very, very approval about spending on this. It's not as if we go and spend several crores on it. Wherever it's absolutely required, we do spend money on this. Uh, you know, then there is this travel expenses, uh, you know, and there is this, uh, you know, various communication and other expenses. Admin infra, our offices, you know, for us to house the uh, software engineers who are involved in this uh, top-notch technologies like the account aggregator, TSP, or CRA, requires a different kind of an infrastructure which we have built, you know, and, and the increased cost for all those things. Having said that, uh, you know, this is not something that you will see a corresponding increase every quarter. That's not going to happen. I think we have hit the, uh, we have hit the limit in terms of our admin. I mean, in spite of the expenses and the other expenses, what you could see is some inflation uh, let increases that may happen. Uh, I do not foresee a big decline happening in any of these expenses. Probably a marginal decline could happen going forward, but a big increase is ruled out. It will not happen. Right. And if you could spell out the marketing spends for this quarter and full year. 
so uh, what we have done in the current quarter is around uh, uh, 60 lakhs of marketing spend is what we have done uh, in the current uh, quarter for the year i'll have to get the amount and give it to you sure and uh, on on staff expenses so exof esofs are we looking at further investments into staff cost and what kind of uh, growth are we looking at uh, the uh, for the for the next year exof esofs uh, so, uh, as you know, the biggest driver for cost increase there will be the annual increment, right? And, uh, you know, we have rolled out an increment for the current year also from April uh, for, for the almost the entire organization. So, uh, going forward, uh, uh, the investment perspective, uh, just to give you a, uh, from OPEX perspective, we have spent almost 12 crores for the year, only on the initiatives that we feel will give us revenue going forward, which is your AA, TSP, CRA, etc. We do not see that investment going down. You know, what we could see is the revenue coming up from these things to a larger extent than what it was in the last year. However, from an investment perspective, we continue to incur this money. So we do not see a drop in investments. We do not see a big increase in investments either on the new initiatives from a manpower or a software development perspective. That is also not uh, budgeted in the current year. Uh, we would be status quo on the investments that we are doing on the current resources who are involved in this development of these uh, new platforms, including the Reimagine. But we do not foresee any big increase in the investments that we are doing. So the increase in the salary cost will be what is driven by the wage increase. Obviously, we will try to offset a lot of that based on a productivity and process improvements. And the increase for the current year would be muted, uh, and we are confident of delivering that number. Got it, got it. Thanks. Thanks, and all the best.